What's up guys, Linux Noob here with another video. Now if you've been browsing through the forums of Linux, like about Linux or watching YouTube videos about Linux, you must have heard about the fact that uh, Linux distributions are a lot lightweight compared to other operating systems like Windows, uh, which basically means it uh, requires a lot less system resources uh, to run compared to those other operating systems. But the question really becomes, is there really any significant difference between those, like, and, like, should you care about that at all? I guess we're gonna find that out today. So, let's get started. Now, before I start, I would like to mention the hardware I'm running on it. Uh, both these operating systems right now the hardware I'm recording the videos now uh, there's a pretty cheap build this is one of the cheapest desktop PCs you can build right now uh, there's a AM1 platform build uh, the processor is a AMD Athlon 5350 it's a 2.05 gigahertz quad core chip uh, it has 8 gigs of RAM and I'm running off of a pretty cheap 8 data uh, 128 gig SSD so uh, that's what the hardware is and that's where I'm recording the video and running both the operating systems right now and also one more thing to take note about it's there's a lot of Linux variants or Linux distros that you can get each have their own system resource requirements and stuff like that a lot of distributions a lot of desktop environments to choose from and each will be different from uh, the other one uh, what I'm gonna try to do here is uh, compare it with the uh, one I'm using right now which is Zubuntu running on XFCE desktop it is pretty much the middle ground of course you can go more towards the minimal side from here and you can of course go to like more higher end stuff like uh, KDE and uh, GNOME 2 sorry uh, excuse me GNOME 3 from here which will obvi obviously need more system resources Now if you go to the forums, of course you'll find a lot of numbers as to how much uh, memory a system, or a dis sorry, a distribution or a desktop environment is hogging up. And uh, But what they really miss is a real world uh, scenarios. What they show is how much a memory or a CPU usage uh, they will take uh, on a ideal setup. But that's not how we use our uh, regular desktops. Of course, those informations are good to have if you want to compare between two desktop environments as to which one is more lighter on your system. But uh, that doesn't really give you an idea as to when you are running a full-blown desktop environment and a distribution, how much resource we're going to take. And uh, of course, after you install all your apps and stuff so we're gonna look at that specifically that a real world use case scenario today now uh, this is my day-to-day uh, -day, uh, Zubuntu distribution install installation I've installed all the apps that I use on a daily basis and I've removed the ones a couple uh, which I don't really use I've customized it a I've put on a new theme over here I've added this plank dock at the bottom and I've put the task panel on the top and uh, let's see how much memory is it using now uh, for the sake of this video I'm running Kazam uh, as a video recorder over here of course that's gonna use uh, uh, some memory and CPU usage and of course one more thing is this is not right after cold boot and also I've been using this system for about 30 minutes now uh, I've been rec I've recorded a couple of videos and uh, surfed through the internet uh, a bit uh, just to give an idea of uh, what a real world case scenario is uh, now if we look at 
the system monitor over here now the system I'm running here is a pretty cheap build it's a uh, running off of an AMG Aslan 5350 which is a 2.05 uh, gigahertz quad core chip and also 8 gigs of memory and an SSD now if we look at system monitor now uh, we can see as for the memory usage it's using about 700 megs of RAM now I have 8 gigs of memory so that's not an not really an issue for me uh, but the thing is uh, when I like look at the system moni monitor right after a cold boot it takes about 400 megs and after I've used for about um, half an hour it it's like um, after I have opened and closed the browser a couple of times, used a few of the other apps, it uh, it usually sits at around 500 megs. Now again, this is running Zubuntu 15.04, running the XFCE desktop. So uh, this is pretty much the memory usage you're gonna get in general. Now, if we fire up Chrome, uh, let's check this and open up a couple of tabs we're gonna open up Amazon over here and YouTube on the other page and let's wait to finish rendering both the pages and now let's check okay so now the memory usage has gone up to 1.1 gigabytes so uh, and don't forget the fact that I'm uh, recording a like recording the screen through Kazam so that's taking up uh, probably 200 megs uh, of memory as well so this is pretty much uh, uh, what the memory usage is going to be on a uh, regular scenario of course you can replace like run any other app in place of Kazam which probably generally is most of our uh, regular day use and that if we close Chrome and that will pretty much uh, jump right back to 700 megs around 700 megs now we're gonna go to my Windows partition on the same machine ah, one more thing is uh, the CPU usage you're gonna you're seeing right here is mostly because of um, the screencaster I've uh, opened up it's rendering all the videos to a file the screen to a file so of course that takes up a lot of CPU usage so that's what those uh, CPU usage all is uh, on idle it's pretty much like almost not using the CPU at all so that's not something to worry about but where really the difference becomes is the uh, memory pretty much so now we're gonna jump into the uh, Windows partition of the same machine and we're gonna see how much memory does it take now here I am on my Windows partition this is running on the exact same hardware that I mentioned before uh, this is uh, running Windows 10 home edition the exact same hardware as I mentioned before I've been using this system for about 30 minutes as well now and I'm running the uh, Bandicam app to record the screen by the way excuse me for the watermark at the top I'm using the trial version so it's gonna add up that uh, over on the top the watermark now if we open up task manager and see how much memory you are using it's using while recording the screen only and doing nothing else it's using about 1.6 to 1.7 gigs of memory uh, now it's on 1.5 gigs uh, pretty much 1.5 to 1.67 gigs of memory now if we recall uh, it was about 700 megs on Linux partition on the Linux installation on this very same machine just doing the screen recording now it's almost twice on the Windows partition or the Windows installation uh, that is a pretty significant difference now we're going to fire up Chrome, open up the exact same two pages that we did on the Linux installation as well. We're going to wait for these two pages to finish rendering. Uh, yeah, as we can see, the, both the pages are, are finished rendering. Now if we check the memory usage, it's pretty much about 2 gigs to 2.1 gigs. 
on Linux it was about 1.1 gigs. That is also a pretty significant difference on memory usage while having a browser open, browser with a couple of tabs open. We're gonna close up Chrome and let's see if it if the memory usage gets back to 1.5 to 1.7 gigs range. Yeah, it pretty much did. It uh, came back to 1.5 gigs of memory. So uh, that is uh, kind of what uh, Windows 10 takes as far as memory usage is concerned. Uh, we're gonna go back to our Linux installation and draw it pretty much a conclusion as to what to take from the video and we're gonna wrap it off. Now here we are back in our Linux installation. Now what really to take away from what we just saw? Now on this machine, this machine has 8 gigs of memory so it really doesn't matter for me if it's uh, taking about 700 megs of memory or more than 2 gigs of memory. I know for a fact in day to day use I mostly never likely to reach that 8 gigabyte mark but if uh, you are running a older system like which has about 2 gigs of uh, memory or even less than 2 gigs of memory like 1 gig or uh, 512 megs even windows is going to a, any modern installation of windows is going to give you a hard time running running on those machines of course it will run but it will be laggy it, um, it it is basically will give you a tough time running it but there something like uh, a lightweight Linux distribution will give you a great experience simply because it's taking up less CPU usage less memory usage and everything like that so it will uh, basically run a lot better is the difference significant of course it is we just saw that in some cases like it's more than twice the memory usage on Windows. So, uh, if you have older hardware, definitely give uh, Linux a try. If you are like uh, switching from Windows XP, if you had a machine that was running Windows XP and you, you want to switch, don't throw away the, that old hardware. Uh, but tr try Linux on it. I'm sure it will run great on there. You can even try, of course you can try Zubun too, but if you want something even more lightweight, uh, let's try out Lubuntu or uh, Peppermint OS 6, LXLE Linux, those are like uh, three distributions, three lightweight distributions that runs great on older hardware. That is pretty much it for the conclusion, I guess. Uh, like the video if you liked it, uh, dislike the video if you disliked it. Uh, leave your feedback in the comment section it really helps a lot and uh, subscribe to the channel for more Linux videos